blurb video here. Yeah, greetings and things. Look at this. I got the uh, sound card out from the uh, recent build for the Socket 7 PC that I put together over on LGR. And yeah, I was very happy to see the response. Everybody seemed to be really on board with that particular build. I wasn't sure how much of a, a nerve, a chord that would strike with folks, but yeah, it seemed to be in that sweet spot of nostalgia for me and uh, a lot of you as well. So yeah, awesome to see that response. However, the sound card. Yeah, this is the thing, because I was using this little Audition 32 Plus, and it's got the wavetable header here, which I wanted to use, but uh, due to the size of it, <laughs> it kind of prevented me using some of the wavetable cards that I had, like this Roland SCB55. Uh, it's just too big, right? So I got something on the way, and it finally showed up today. This right here is the Dream Blaster X2 GS. So yeah, this is pretty darn cool, I thought. It is uh, very similar to the Dream Blaster X2 that came before this. So yeah, similar to the X2, it is still an X2 product from that same lineup. Uh, but the thing is, this one has an official Roland GS licensed sound bank included, which makes it sound really close. To a lot of the sound canvas devices that I enjoy using and in particular that's kind of what you get on here. A whole lot smaller obviously and it uses the exact same wave blaster type header connection. I'm trying to see here like did I forget anything? Uh, yeah anyway I, I got it from Certico, the Certa shop. 85 euro per unit. <laughs> yeah Full General MIDI and Roland GS implementation, 128 General MIDI instruments, of course, 180 variation instruments, more than 200 drum sounds, 15 sets, one sound effect set, 16-bit, and uh, Roland Dream license, express permission of Roland Corporation. It's pretty cool. Like, the Dream Blaster X2 already sounded really fantastic, and so as soon as I saw this one that has, like, an official Roland... <laughs> seal of approval, so to speak, or at least, you know, it's, it's got stuff in there licensed from Roland. I think that's great, just because I, I like the way that those original things sound banks from the sound canvas devices. I like how they sound, and I've heard some samples of this on the Certico's the, the Certa Shop videos, and they've got, like, Doom and Duke 3D, and it sounds really close to how I think it should sound. And, uh, oh, one thing I want to mention, though, before we do that, uh, a lot of folks are bringing up, like, <laughs> because I was saying this was too big to fit on the card and also get in there in the computer, folks were saying, obviously you don't have to buy another wavetable card. You could just use your existing ones and then use a pass-through cable. I mean, I guess, right? Like a little, uh, little extension ribbon cable or something like that. So I got one. They make 26 pin extension pass-through things. It's just, just a straight pass-through. Of course, you could make one of these yourself or whatever, but sure, you can do that. And it would be a solution. So you got that right there. Pin one to that. Going on to pin one of this. And there we go. Uh, okay, this works, but do you see how ridiculous this is? <laughs> I, I genuinely did not even consider this because, like, the very thought is ridiculous to me. Where are you going to put this? This is not that the whole idea of these wavetable daughter board cards is that they plug onto this one and then it just sort of sits in there next to your sound card you know because there's there's nowhere else to put this in there this is a baby at case there's no room like if you plop this inside the case it's up against the graphics cards and it's up against the bottom of the case and then there's uh, it's just flopping around awkwardly so sure you can do this if um you really need to but I don't. That's, that's that's sort of the end of that. Uh, and I had actually already ordered this thing well before I put the, this put this build together. So it's not like I bought this specifically for this. I actually bought this for my uh, wood grain PC because I wanted to install that in there on the Orpheus sound card that I had. Um, instead, I'm using another little wavetable thing. I'm going to use the Yucatan FX in that, and then I'm going to use this in this one. All that to say that uh, I like this solution a whole lot better. And you know, <laughs> I 
I think it sounds awesome from what I've heard of the example videos. So I think that is a perfect solution for my use case scenario, at least for now until I change my mind. <laughs> Swap out things, because that's what I do with these builds. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in the Socket 7 build, which I still haven't named anything clever yet. And let's try it out with some games and MIDI files. What the crap is this? All right. Got the Socket 7 build going here with a CRT this time. I got a number of comments. I always do. Anytime I use an LCD instead of a CRT, uh, people being like, oh, why aren't you using your CRT? Or I'll get new viewers who aren't familiar with my other work saying, um, are you familiar with computer CRTs? They're actually really good. And you get awesome refresh rates and all sorts of things. Uh, yes, I am very familiar with CRTs. I love using them in person. Recording them, on the other hand, is another matter. I've done a whole video on why that sucks. Uh, just because, especially in build videos, I'm going back and forth between refresh rates and resolutions for setting things up and it's just a pain to record. So I prefer to stick to LCDs for those projects. I don't like dialing those things in between every single shot if I don't have to. So I don't. Anyway, what, what were we even doing? We got on a CRT ramble there. Right. Audition 32. So here is the volume control stuff for at least some of the pertinent things. Synthesizer balance is the FM synth, the OPL3 SAX. Uh, software wavetable, that is the built-in wavetable that is just uh, not the hardware one we just added. It has its own little Yamaha thingy in there that does kind of like Yamaha XG sound effects. I believe in the build video I called it GS. It's not. It's, it's like a Yamaha XG compatible type of thing, which is really Yamaha's version of GS. I don't think there's actually any controls for the wavetable card, like the daughter board we just added. So it's just always at max volume, I suppose. But anyway, uh, let's just get to that. The main thing to change here is in the multimedia settings, we've got the MIDI selection here for MIDI output. So it, it was on uh, soft synth because I was showing that. That's that Yamaha built-in stuff it's just on the board. FM synth will be the OPL3 SAX, and then this is the wavetable output, I suppose you can call it. So just as an example, let's go back to something that we're familiar with. And yeah, this is just going to be playing on the Yamaha soft synth, so not the X2GS. Okay, that's that. Now I'll switch over to the X2GS Dream Blaster. Hopefully the difference there should be immediate uh, even if I were to add reverb to the soft synth, which I mean we could do. Uh, yeah, it's just a very big difference in the sound, the drums, the instruments that it's using. We're going to go back over to the soft synth here with some reverb now. Okay. And again, the X2GS Dream Blaster. night and day difference and it sounds better as far as I'm concerned. I do actually kind of like the soft synth. It's not bad, but if I've got an option for something that is a Roland GS style thing or a sound canvas kind of thing, I'm going to go for it. <laughs> it just uh, often sounds a lot better, especially with a lot of games. Many of those were, were uh, written, composed with Roland instruments in mind. And just for fun, let's go back over to the uh, OPL3. I mean, that's so delightfully charming. I love the way that that sounds also. 
I, which is one reason that I chose the Audition 32 Plus because it has that nice OPL3 SAX chipset on there and it sounds great, you know, a lot better than the emulated crappy versions of OPL3 that ended up, uh, that ended up on so many cards back then. Uh, so you know, that's a nice option in the DOS games that are going to use FM Synth OPL2 or 3 on their own, but yeah, I'm just going to leave it on the uh, X2GS wavetable. <laughs> sounds fantastic do wish that you could adjust the reverb and any kind of delay or other effects settings doesn't look like you can because yeah like that only control panel for the audition 32 is this really now let's move over to Duke Nukem 3D just because and now with the with that installed in there we can just choose sound canvas and as long as it's on the right MIDI port, which Audition 32 configures it on 330, then there we go. That's a good sound in terms of sound canvassy sounds. I like it a whole lot, and that is why I bought it. Yeah, I'm gonna save the settings. They're all good devices, but this having those rolling sounds, it just adds a little extra authenticity. And again, the refresh rate keeps going back and forth, which is why I'm, I'm scrolling back and forth here on my camera. So sorry about that, but <clears throat> uh, Doom, of course, is also another great choice in terms of uh, hearing that. Interesting little whistle sound there. You change the refresh rate or the shutter speed again. Hopefully that's pretty close, but... Yeah! Ah! Crap! Give me a shot, guys! Yeah, man, solid drum sounds, rolling D guitars. I'm not gonna say they're the best guitars, they're not. Uh, some of the other MIDI devices that I have, I think sound way better with the little fake guitars in, in general MIDI, but anyway, that's why I built the MIDI Mountain. And of course, if I wanted to, I can plug that into here and uh, just use the game port. Oh, 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 that reminds me, another thing that I bought from uh, Sarta Shop. <laughs> yeah, this little thing right here, check this out. The DB15 MIDI. All right, so instead of having like a, uh, a full on breakout cable solution, you can get MIDI in and out right there. And that plugs into the DB15 port on the back of the sound card, which also of course doubles as the joystick. But as long as you've got MPU 401 support on a sound card, usually sound blasters and compatibles like this. Yeah, there you go. Isn't that cool? I just wanted some music playing in the background. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so if I want, I can use this to easily hook up this entire setup to the MIDI Mountain. It won't be like complete MPU 401 support in terms of intelligent mode or anything like that, but you can use soft MPU and things like that to get that, or I can just, of course, use 
an actual MP, MIFIPC kind of thing. What is that called? Yeah, that thing that adds a real MPU 401. But then all sorts of cool things. I love checking out whatever Serta Shop has going whenever they have new things going. And so I got this and I got the Dream Blaster X2GS. Wonderful. I mean, this is immediately one of my favorite little wavetable header thingies now because it's uh, it's so small and it's so capable and it gives me the sounds that I supremely enjoy without needing to break out an entire sound canvas card or, uh, you know, like a proper tabletop desktop sound canvas or the SCB-55 PCB. That's it. Thanks for watching this blurb.